I was watching Super Eye Patch Wolf's latest video regarding dark side of content creation, and there was this section in the video that really hit me like a cement truck sliding on a giant banana peel off a cliff. You mean, you mean the devil? What the devil? <laughs> the devil. Heartbreaking, I guess. Just like obsessed over that. You know, a video does poorly, and I just like lose an entire day because I'm just like, oh. What constructive thing could I possibly do with that information? <laughs> yeah. As a brand new content creator, I have to say that this thing is less than useless. I upload a video and then start swiping down on my YouTube studio app every 5 seconds to see how my numbers haven't changed because I only get like 75 views anyway. I can't even begin to fathom the soul crushing experience that somebody with like 100,000 subs must feel. So thank you Super Eye Patch Wolf for pointing out the obvious disservice I was go doing to myself without even realizing it. Now allow me to fix it, at least partially. So I'm thinking, if this widget doesn't provide any useful info and it actively harms YouTubers mental health, let's get rid of it. Just Oop. Disappear. Gone. Bye. I took it upon myself to spend a whole hour learning how to code a Chrome plugin. And I made this. See, if it's turned off, the thingy shows. But if it's turned on, thingy is gone. Thingy, where are you? Thingy! thingy! So after that extensive testing that you've witnessed, it's time to deploy this massively complicated plugin to the Chrome extension store. I have to pay? This is outrageous, I can't believe the complete ripoff that Google does. One of the richest companies on the planet wants me to pay. Fine, here's your stupid five dollars, now let me upload the damn thing. If you're curious how I made it, I found a combination of this tutorial, which admittedly is a bit dated by now, but it worked very well for what I needed, and the official Google documentation on how to create these extensions. You'll find links to both of those in the description. Okay, now I have to wait for it to be approved by the Google Chrome extension thing. What to do, what to do. Well. I guess I can use this time productively. Let's take it on GitHub, so it's open source, everyone can see the code and see how basic it is. I'll get to work and you'll find the link in the description when I'm done. Right, that took the whole of... seconds. Let's see how the Google review process is going. Ah, this is gonna take a while. It would appear I need to busy myself for longer. I wonder what are the most popular web browsers out there? Oh great, so it's Chrome, Safari, Chrome by Microsoft trademark, and then in fourth place it's Firefox. Man, this graph is depressing. Get it, get it off the screen, I don't want to see it anymore. Fine, I guess I'll make an extension for Safari as well, since a lot of YouTubers will probably have Macs. I guess it shouldn't be too hard, all I need is to download Safari. I hate Apple computers, I hate Apple computers, I hate Apple com- No, but seriously, just look at the hops I have to jump through in order to get macOS running in a virtual machine so I can make the most basic of basic extensions and test it. It's infuriating. Patch this, download that image, make this partition, iron that shirt. Many hours later. There, it's done, and it has Safari. All is well. Let's get to work. Pardon? I stun a bicycle. <gasps> One hour later. Much better. So let's try installing Xcode again and... I will literally set you on fire. Why are you like this? Okay, I've changed the parameter in the text file to make it more like a Mac. Will you please work now? Oh, fuck right off. I'll try again tomorrow. The next day. Ah, apparently you can download Xcode straight from the Apple website and continue like that. So I've just gone ahead and done that. For those wondering why I need Xcode, it's because this article says that it can convert a Chrome extension to a Safari extension, but by this point I'm really wondering if it wasn't just easier to write it from scratch. Well, knowing Apple and their lockdown ecosystem, probably not. My exasperation at this point led me to make this video. It's nearly 7am and I've been going at this since about 5am. Luckily it's to install the VM and to run the command to converted from a Chrome extension to a Safari one, but I don't think it was very successful and when I tried to run this in Safari and let's see if I can just When I tried to run this in Safari, it tells me to open thing and I'm like, okay, let's open thing and then there's no extension in it, so I don't know what's wrong and at this point I no longer care Apple, what you gotta do? And wouldn't you know it, immediately after I complained that I couldn't get it to work, I found one thing online that I forgot, and now it works. And it's right there. Cute. So yeah. I guess I care again. The link that finally saved me with instructions on how to build this plugin is this one. 
and I'll add it to the description in case you're looking for it as well. So, now that I have a working product, I need to package it and hike it on the Apple App Store, which I have a sneaky suspicion that not only will it be more difficult than the Chrome one, which I still haven't been approved on by the way, but it may also take a hell of a lot longer. A few minutes later. 79 pounds Ample wants me to pay 79 pounds for the privilege of uploading a free browser extension on their lockdown app store that would only benefit people using their platform and nobody else. Look, I want to make this available on Safari, I really do, but I'm not giving Apple 79 pounds. I bought a secondhand iPad and I feel dirty using it. It's just absolutely ridiculous. After a conversation with my otter of the significant variety, who works in the industry, apparently that 79 pounds is a yearly cost. And if you miss a payment or cancel your account for even one year, the app, all your apps or extensions get removed. Not only that, but the people who are using your app or extension can no longer get it either. But to make it even better, if you don't provide frequent enough updates, and God only knows what frequent enough means, it gets removed from the App Store anyway. I mean, sure, I can get a complex app that has all sorts of APIs and integrations with the phone and so on, needing to have more frequent updates. But this is literally a CSS and a JavaScript that just find one particular container on the YouTube Studio website and remove it. It doesn't need maintenance, it doesn't need updates, it will always do that. The only time I'll have to update it is if at some point, for some reason, Google changed the name of that particular container or update their interface with something else. That's it. So, unfortunately, the last two days of trying to make this work, in the bin. You can find the source code for the Safari plugin on the same GitHub that GitHub repo that's linked below. But otherwise, that's where this experiment stops. I am not interested in paying that much money just to have an extension on the Apple App Store. Side note, before getting into the next section about creating the plugin for Firefox and Edge, I did a quick Google search for most popular web browsers on Linux, and the second result, the article by fossbytes.com, which in the name stands for free and open source, nearly made me fall out of my chair. Linux users, I have to know, on January 30th, 2022, did you all start spontaneously feel offended and like in unison as the writer pressed the publish button on that article? I cannot believe a Linux user in their right mind would ever consider touching Edge as their main browser of choice. It is the embodiment of literally everything they try to get away from. Hell, I feel offended that Windows is my operating system of choice. Anyway, back to the video. The third most used web browser out there is, saddenly, but not surprisingly, Microsoft Edge. The good news? Edge is literally just Chrome with a Microsoft trademark trim around it. To convert the current plugin should be fairly straightforward. A few moments later. And for once, I was right. It took only 15 minutes. I didn't even have to make a new source code for it. I just straight up used the Chrome one and submitted it to the Microsoft extension store. And that was it. This, this is how easy things can and should be. Let's see if Firefox is the same. Yes, Google, I'm sure that Firefox, the world's fourth most popular web browser that has existed longer than you have, is not going to harm my computer. You can just... Right, so it seems that in Firefox, they use a slightly older plugin format than the one in Google Chrome slash Microsoft Chrome. So I'll actually have to downgrade a few things to the previous version in order for the plugin to work in Firefox. Not a problem really, it's just only a few lines of code. I just found it interesting that they're using an older version and testing it works as expected. Neat. So let's stick it on the store. A few moments later. Again, very easy and very straightforward. No complicated procedures and no added cost involved, Apple. So with three of our four extensions submitted to their respective stores for approval, now I can finally go and rest and take a well-deserved nap. Ooh, the Chrome one got published. I got an email telling you this just a few seconds after I went to bed. That was really quick. This sparks joy. So you can, of course, find links to it in the description so you can start using it immediately. Sadly, the Firefox and Edge ones will probably take a couple of more days and I want to push this video out ASAP, so I'm not gonna wait for them. But as soon as they are done, I'll just update the video description with links to them so you can find them easily. Our, and they, you will also be able to find links to them in the repository readme file if you go down that route. So, if you're a creator that's getting plagued by this horrible widget in the YouTube Studio Dash, these extensions will hopefully make your life a little easier. Video making should be fun, not a rat race against an ever-moving target that demands human sacrifice. That demands your humanity as sacrifice. Rage against the machine! But well, that's me. Peace!